Good afternoon. Happy Savage Saturday. Keeps of the cash. Gary V, the casual comic guy here. We are here with Savage Saturday Comic Review, episode 76. And today we are continuing our multi-part review of the introductory Zula saga. And this is Conan the Barbarian, issue 85 from 1978, with an absolutely incredible cover art. By John Basama, inks by Ernie Chan, and this is just a spectacular beauty. You have Conan and Zula in battle. You got that Firehawk in the background, just absolutely amazing. Or just whatever, Hawk. It's just a beautiful cover. Swords against Stygia. All right, so when we last left our barbarians, they were on the way to the City of Magicians for Zula to get revenge, and uh, they're on the back of giant um giant birds on their way flying to stygia to the land city of magicians but conan is having some second thoughts about this and as our panel opens we have an absolutely great shot right here of course written by roy thomas and just beautiful beautiful cover uh beautiful interior art you can't get any better Doing Conan, in my opinion, the John Sema and Ernie Chan together. Now as it opens, they're trying to feel each other out. They got a long flight ahead of them. They're going to have to actually land and rest the birds before they even make it to Stygia. And Conan wants to learn a little bit more about Zula. Zula wants to learn a little bit more about Conan and Bailey. Um, so Conan is asking them. Zula said, I, I told you plenty. You made your vow. Isn't that enough? And Conan, is no, Conan says, no, I need more plenty more we just scratched the surface if we're to do battle with each other if we're traveling with each other then we need to have some confidence in each other and uh conan offers up what's going on with him first and he's like um talking about uh billy and how in a earlier adventure you know <clears throat> she found out you know, her true heritage, she's a, um, a princess of Ascalon. Her uncle, her father was deposed by her evil uncle, and he now rules. She thought her father was dead, but he's actually alive. And at least it's rumored so. And she's on her way to the city to make sure that he is. And um, so there's a lot going on there. And Conan's letting him know about all this. About him and Billy fighting their way there. He tells the history of them together, how Conan was on the run from the law, ended up hopping a ship, sailed out to sea, Billet and her uh, Corsairs took it over, and uh, he was the only survivor, and Billet made him made Conan her first mate and also her love. And Conan's been second in command with Billet ever since, and he's just catching Zula up on who he is and what he's about. And then Zula, uh, well, they're still going. Um, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. My mind's racing. This was a great, fun, fun book to reread. And then it gets to uh, when Conan and Billy stormed Asgalon to depose her evil uncle, and and the uncle saved his life by letting her know that even though he betrayed her father, and it looked like. He was dead. He is still alive and uh, captive of the Stygians. So Conan and Billy had set back out. They ended up getting embroiled in a plot with uh, Nornab, who was a half king and all tyrant. Conan describes him as, and they helped the brother Mirath overthrow him and take control. But then Mirath had a vision, as we learned last issue that Billy would put the city in danger by some decisions she would make. And so he was going to lock her up until she passed eventually for, for the entirety of her life. Uh, she got free. She took with him. Uh, she took with her, his bride, and they set out to free her father if he's still alive. And... 
Conan returning to look for Glee was captured, and that's where him and Zula met. Zula helped him get free, and it takes us up to the current situation where he has his vow of indebtedness to Zula, and then just some great art right here by John Basema and Ernie Chan Inken. And just going over what I just said, Conan, it's just letting a little bit of the history go, letting Zula know what brought their past together. All right, and then Zula, of course, starts telling his tale, how he was the son to the chieftain of Zambala, a small tribe that dwelled south of Darfur. And uh, he, was, he was about to go through his rights of manhood, when um, when a band of bloodthirsty Kushites attacked them and they wanted their territory, and they slew every man in the camp but him. Zula, thinking quick, took off his royal raiments and put them on a fellow Darfarian that was already dead. So they thought they slew the son of the chieftain and they put and they brought him into slavery. And then they sold him to a wizard. And this wizard's name, I gotta look it up because it's a weird name and I can't remember it off the top of my head. Even though I just read this again not long ago. But they brought him to Stygia itself to Cachetta, the fabled city of magicians. <coughs> right, and even among my own people, I had heard of this fortress, Zula said, where the wizards of the Black Ring held their secret sorceress conclaves. The more worldly ambitious among them eventually went north in time to Kemi, or more likely to Luxor, which is where Belit happens to be right now to free her father. So you can see where paths are going to cross eventually, uh, where they would impress wide-eyed kings in their arcane skills. All right, so uh, he learned uh, um, a smattering of the of the Stygian tongue while being captive, and then they ended up selling him. Uh, to this wizard, and I'm trying to look at his name, but of course, it is eluding me for the moment, but we will get to it. Uh, but he was an elder wizard, and uh, oh, Shu, Shu Onoru is his name. So you can see the tale being played out, you can see him captured by the Stygians, see him being sold to the wizard, Shu on a roll. We're just going to call him Shu from here on out to make it simple for me. All right, so we sold the Shu. Now, Shu is a really highly prejudiced priest. He thinks because Zula's black that he doesn't have the ability to learn or to adapt or to do anything but comprehend the simplest commands. And Zula lets him believe that as he plots his escape and his freedom. And Zula plays scared to him, even though he's not. And Zula is reveling in the fact that this guy is foolish enough to think that he has this guy in his control that is nothing but a dumb beast. And Zula is anything but that. But Zula is playing on the uh, racial prejudice that this wizard has against him. And so Zula, who is a teen, is enslaved to this guy for quite a long time and actually grows into a man. But as he's growing into a man, this wizard is practicing his arcane spells. And he's doing it all in front of Zula, thinking Zula too stupid to learn anything. And Zula, the whole time, is learning the spells that this guy is casting and becoming a, a wizard and a magician himself. And just biding his time. Now, unfortunately, Zula, trying to practice one of the spells, awakens a creature. And the creature almost kills Zula and takes it back with him. The priest steps up, though, and banishes the creature. Mm -hmm. And now he sees that Zula can learn. And it doesn't get any better for, for Zula from there. So Zula is then sold into slavery once again after the wizard makes him fight other people uh, for his entertainment. Mm -hmm. Zula does not want to fight them, offers, hey, let's team up. And the other guys, who are Kushites and Stygians, just want to attack and kill him because he's different than they are. All right, they're all different races. Um, 
but they don't have any love for one another. So he sells him to, uh, since he goes, since you apparently can learn Zula, you've much to learn. Still, someone more patient than I will have to teach you. And then he was sold to, uh, to Shevat. The Kemi slave merchant, and uh, that's and that's when him and Conan crossed paths when Zula was being led into the city in Shevat's care. And then they were able to free each other. And then you get to the part here where they finished their tales. They've been talking to each other, and Conan, um, you know, and Zula says he'll soon see me right enough, and I'll be the last sight he sees. As Forgotten Jula is my witness. And he plans to return to the City of Magicians and kill this guy that kept him in slavery for so long and then sold him again. And then Conan once said, I wouldn't be surprised if you do, Zula, but I will not be there to see it. Zula surprises, what? But you swore. And he says, as I said before, I made two vows. So either way I slice it, I'm going to let somebody down. Your revenge can wait, but I'm not so sure about Billy. And that right now... The needs of Billy are really taking Conan over. He's got to make sure that she doesn't get killed while trying to free her father. And um, Zula calls Conan a son of a jackal, spot of a jackal, and they do battle. Two great warriors going at it. Conan's trying not to kill him. Zula's going all out because he feels wrong. He doesn't understand Conan's ties and bonds to Billy. But then finally, Conan says, look, the, the city Luxor isn't far from where we're going. And if you help me, go make sure Belit's okay and we help her and free her father if he's yet alive, which I doubt. Then we will both travel with you back to the city of magicians and help you get your revenge. And Zula, Zula, Zula finds this uh, a fitting vow that he'll have double the help especially from another warrior, um, almost equal to Conan in Bailey. And so he agrees to leave with Conan and go seek her out. And then we get to our last page with Bailey waking up from the trance she was in where her and um, oh, her and Nefta had turned to serpents. It was a, a gift that Nefta was given once by a priest. She could only use it once. And it brought them to where they currently are. She, and Billy's like, where are we? And she says, where you wish to be? Far beneath the palace of King uh, Stefan II. And then they're going to make their way up there and see if he still has her father held hostage. And they're going to fight to free her father. And then that is where it leaves off. And guys, we will continue part three next week. But as far as this issue, go, issue goes, cover art in inks A+. Plus. Story A+, plus. great Roy Thomas story, great banter between two warriors who also butt heads and have a bit of battle, who are both strong-willed, who have both been slaves before, who are both proud men, and along with Billy, they both have had people in their lives murdered by others who sought to control other people for their own needs and whims and their own rightful gains, right? In their in those evil people's eyes. Their rightful gains at the cost of others. All right, so all three of them have survived people like that and become who they are. We're about to see them all combined together in the next issue, and the story's just going to get greater. It's just going to get grander. An awesome setup for the next installment. I hope you guys will join me next week when we go over Conan the Barbarian, issue 86, and continue the tale of Conan and Zula and their first meeting and pairing, and also of Billy. And that's it for today, guys. Until next time, keep it casual. And, as always, check out my sponsor. Attention all, use channel sponsor Rogue Trader at theroguetraderutah.com and my code, keep it casual, for 10% off your comic cleaning and pressing needs. Remember, when submitting your books to be graded, use a trusted professional.